Do you think that uh, the normal people in the street understand your work? <laughs> well, I think in the technical details, no. But I think uh, the basic uh, principles of, of what we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it, I think uh, anybody can understand. I think everybody is interested in uh, the universe. I mean, since hundreds of thousands of years, people have been looking up at the stars, wondering what they're made of, what makes them shine. Uh, people have been trying to understand the way matter works so that they can actually use it to improve their everyday life. So I think this is a universal quest to understand the nature of matter and the nature of the universe. It's a, a universal quest you know, for hundreds of thousands of years and, and all over the planet. Uh, at CERN where I work, we have uh, people coming from over 100 different countries to participate in the research. What would be the biggest discovery you can think about in your subject? I think the biggest discovery would be to find something that none of us theorists has imagined before. It's going to be difficult because so many different theorists with so many different ideas. Uh, people think that perhaps, for example, there might be uh, additional dimensions of space uh, beyond the three that we're familiar with. Uh, people imagine, expect that there are different particles that we haven't seen yet. Uh, people hope to understand the dark matter that the astrophysicists tell us fill the universe. So there, there are plenty of what you might describe as expected discoveries, but I think the most exciting one would be some unexpected discovery. You just mentioned uh, dark matter and uh, we've heard about dark matter and dark energy. And uh, how do you feel when you know that 95% of everything around us in the universe, we don't know? Yeah, well, I think it should make us feel very humble, in fact. Uh, until maybe the 15th or the 16th century, uh, we thought that the Earth was the center of the universe. Then. Copernicus taught us that actually it's going around the sun and then we discovered that the sun is an insignificant star among a hundred billion others uh, going around the Milky Way galaxy. And then we learned that there are a hundred billion other galaxies in the universe. Now the astronomers tell us that the visible matter in the universe is only a few percent of the total and that in addition to the matter there is also energy in empty space uh, not associated with particles at all. So I think you know, we really are a very, very insignificant little piece of the universe. And if we, if we really understood that better, uh, maybe we'd behave better towards each other. You've hopes it. <laughs> well, at, at least at CERN, when we're doing research on it, people from different countries seem to get on very well. So we have uh, Israelis working with Palestinians. We have Indians working with Pakistanis. We have Americans working with Iranians. We even have English working with French. What will be coming in the next 10 years? In particle physics? Yeah. So uh, we plan to uh, start the LHC uh, colliding uh, later on this year. Uh, there will be a first run of the LHC uh, we plan until the end of next year. Uh, that will give us some insight into new physics beyond what we have from previous accelerators. And then, progressively, we'll continue operating the LHC uh, for a few years with its present uh, configuration. Uh, then we plan to make a first upgrade, and if the physics justifies, then uh, perhaps in about 10 years' time, we'll make a second upgrade of the LHC. So the LHC, we plan to keep on operating, certainly for 10 years, probably 15 or 20 years. Now. Among the, the top physics topics that we're looking for, uh, we discussed earlier on dark matter. Uh, that's something that perhaps could come out quite quickly. Perhaps it might take a lot longer, but I think that within 10 years, we would certainly know whether dark matter is made of the sort of particles that we nowadays imagine. Uh, another fundamental issue that we didn't discuss was uh, where do the masses of the different elementary particles come from? So there's a theory for that. That theory predicts the existence of a particle called the Higgs boson. And that's uh, one of the sort of headline items that we're going to be looking for. Uh, now I'm actually a little bit ambivalent about the Higgs boson. Of course, I mean, I've been working on the Higgs boson for many years, 
But still, it would be perhaps even more interesting if we don't find it, uh, because whatever replaces it would have to be an even more unusual piece of physics. Can you please uh, tell us uh, about uh, your work and uh, said it has nothing to do with dark holes, or has it to do? It, it's possible that the LHC might produce black holes. It's possible. It's a very speculative idea, but it's possible. However, if it does, the theories that predict those black holes also predict that they are extremely unstable and are not dangerous to people at all. But you know, we don't even have to worry about the theory. We know that the Earth is being bombarded by particles from outer space, the cosmic rays, and has been bombarded for billions of years by cosmic rays which are much more energetic than what we can make with the LHC. So if the LHC could make dangerous black holes, then cosmic rays would have made dangerous black holes, would be making dangerous black holes. But the Earth is still here, uh, the sun is still here, the stars are still here, despite being bombarded by all these cosmic rays. So it's just really not possible that the LHC will produce anything dangerous. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.